Hi guys, this week we will be reading a story entitled Night, and it's about um, a first-hand account of the Holocaust. To provide you with some background, Night was written by a man called Eile Weisel. W is pronounced as V in German, so it's Weisel, not Weisel. Um, he, was, he lived from 1928 to 2016. He was a teacher, writer, and Nobel Peace Prize winner. Born in Romania, Vizo and his family were among millions of Europeans deported to concentration camps during the Holocaust. In 1944, the Nazis sent the family to Auschwitz, where Vizo's mother sister, and sister perished. Months later, when Vizo and his father were moved to Buchenwald concentration camp, his father also died. Buchenwald was eventually liberated, and Vizo went on to write about his experience. His many works include Dawn and The Accident, both sequels tonight. So now I'm going to go ahead and read you the actual text. It might not sound exactly right. A lot of these words are in Polish and German, and so I may mispronounce them, but I will do my best to get us through it. Okay. The SS offered us a beautiful present for the new year. We had just returned from work. As soon as we passed the camp's entrance, we sensed something out of the ordinary in the air. The roll call was shorter than usual. The evening soup was distributed at great speed, swallowed as quickly. We were anxious. I was no longer in the same block as my father. They had transferred me to another commando, the construction one, where 12 hours a day I hauled heavy slabs of stone. The head of my new block was a German Jew, small with piercing eyes. That evening, he announced to us that henceforth, no one was allowed to leave the block after the evening soup. A terrible word began to circulate soon thereafter. Selection. We knew what it meant, and SS would examine us. Whenever he found someone extremely frail, a muscle man was what we called those inmates. He would write down his number, good for the crematorium. After the soup, we gathered between the bunks. The veterans told us, you're lucky to have been brought here so late. Today, this is paradise to what the camp was two years ago. Back then, Buna was a veritable hell. No water, no blankets, less soup and bread. At night, we slept almost naked and the temperature was 30 below. We were collecting corpses by the hundreds every day. Work was very hard. Today, this is a little paradise. The capos back then had orders to kill a certain number of prisoners every day. And every week, selection, a merciless selection. Yes, you are lucky. Enough, be quiet, I beg them. Tell your stories tomorrow or some other day. They burst out laughing. They were not veterans for nothing. Are you scared? We too were scared. And at that time for good reason. The old men stayed in their corner, silent, motionless, hunted down creatures. Some were praying. One more hour, then we would know the verdict, death or reprieve. And my father, I first thought of him now. How could he pass selection? He had aged so much. Our blocateste had not been outside a concentration camp since 1933. He had already been through all the slaughterhouses, all the factories of death. Around nine o'clock, he came to stand in our midst. Octum. There was instant silence. Listen carefully to what I am about to tell you. For the first time, his voice quivered. In a few moments, selection will take place. You will have to undress completely. Then you will go one by one before the SS doctors. I hope you will all pass, but you must try to increase your chances. Before you go into the next room, try to move your limbs. Give yourself some color. Don't walk slowly, run. Run as if you had the devil at your heels. Don't look at the SS. Run straight in front of you. He paused and then added, and most important, don't be afraid. That was a piece of advice we would have loved to be able to follow. I undressed, leaving my clothes on my cot. Tonight, there was no danger that they would be stolen. Tibi and Yossi, who had changed commandos at the same time I did, came to urge me. 
Let's stay together. It will make us stronger. Yossi was mumbly something. He probably was praying. I had never suspected that Yossi was religious. In fact, I had always believed the opposite. Tibby was silent and very pale. All the block inmates stood naked between the rows of bunks. This must be how one stands for the last judgment. They are coming. Three SS officers surrounded the notorious Dr. M Mingeli, the very same who had received us in Birkenau. The Blaka Tusti attempted to smile. He asked us, ready? Yes, we were ready. So were the SS doctors. Dr. M Mingeli was holding a list, our numbers. He nodded to the Blaka Tusti. We can begin as if this were a game. The first to go were the notables of the block, the Stubinaltesti, the Kapos, the foreman, all of whom were in perfect physical condition, of course. Then came the ordinary prisoners' terms. Dr. Mingeli looked them over from head to toe. From time to time, he noted a number. I had but one thought, not to have my number taken down and not to show my left arm. In front of me, there were only Tibby and Yossi. They passed. I had time to notice that Mengele had not written down their numbers. Someone pushed me. It was my turn. I ran without looking back. My head was spinning. You're too skinny. You are too weak. You are too skinny. You are good for the ovens. The race seemed endless. I felt as though I'd been running for years. You are too skinny. You are too weak. At last I arrived, exhausted. When I caught my breath, I asked Yossi and Tibby, did they write me down? No, said Yossi. Smiling, he added, anyway, they couldn't have. You were running too fast. I began to laugh. I was happy. I felt like kissing him. At that moment, the others did not matter. They had not written me down. Those whose numbers had been written down and noted were standing apart, abandoned by the whole world. Some were weeping silently. That's part one of our reading and part two is on the next slide.